Apologies, there was a, a break in the stream there and I will keep going with uh, some of the questions. So um, the next question was, uh, which I've already answered, was about decentralising uh, Highland Council. The next question is um, a question about my view on a, a UBI. Um, on a universal basic income. I'm very supportive of the notion of uh, UBI because of the experience of the last year where trying to get money into people's pockets was really difficult. Trying to reach the people that needed it the most with actual cash was next to impossible. We tried uh, various different means, but we had to use systems that were already established like uh, the council tax uh, uh, reduction scheme like non-domestic rates for, for businesses um, and uh, like um, free school meals and that kind of thing. And it made it very complicated um, and very bureaucratic. And it was no way to, to reach people who actually uh, needed uh, the help. And so I am very supportive of a UBI. We cannot do it as a devolved parliament because uh, to make it um, affordable, you need, and to, to have the powers to do it, um, you would need to devolve all of the welfare and all of the tax powers to Scotland because to do it partially so for example to layer it on top of the the benefit system as it is is not affordable and is too complex so it needs to be a replacement that's the whole notion of it that you identify what it would cost for uh, people um, and a uh, what um, then you'd have uh, one system to reduce the bureaucracy in reaching people um, in terms of the, the next and last question is um, around uh, wedding businesses um, in the Highlands um, and the wider supply chain and how to uh, continue to support when it comes to the reduction in um, the reduction of, uh, of trade because of the international uh, travel ban. And um, I, I do think that those who are a uh, those who are dependent on international travel are going to be affected for longer. And in light of that, if there is any uh, further support, I think it needs to go to those who are most affected by the international travel ban. I do not think we know when we can lift the international uh, travel ban. Um, I think that uh, the difficulty with the international with, in with the international world is that whilst we can control uh, COVID within our own shores to an extent, um, we cannot control uh, COVID uh, in other people's countries. And therefore, the, the travel ban is going to be there um, longer than any of us might have liked. So the short answer, I suppose, is that need to on go for ongoing financial support um, and identifying those that rely on international travel uh, more than, more than uh, other businesses. Okay, we've got two questions here on roads um, that are very similar. Uh, one says that the roads in and around Kyle and Plockton are atrocious. Um, it's a question about how um, the, the council can have money for artwork on the banks of the nest, but not for roads. And um, what can you do in regards to the state of local council roads? Um, roads are terrible in the villages of Kyle, Plockton, uh, Durnish and other places. Well, as the questioner asks, says, um, local roads are the responsibility of Highland Council. We've come through a very difficult winter. It's been very cold. The roads are worse. Local roads are the responsibility of Highland Council. 
and uh, obviously the more ongoing maintenance there are, there is um, uh, the, the less, uh, the, the, the more uh, improved they are. I do think, and I've said this publicly before, that Scan Lachal's roads are probably the worst in my constituency and they're not that great elsewhere. But Sky and Lachalsh always seems to be um, worse than anywhere else. I don't know if it was the, the nature of the, the quality of the road when they were first laid, um, whether it's the, the, the funding. Um, but ultimately, when it comes to local roads, I can I I am accountable for um, um the, the national roads, uh, those roads managed by Transport Scotland, the 87. But when it comes to council roads, my main job is in terms of representing your views to Highland Council. So uh Particular issues that have been raised tonight are issues that I will take to Highland Council. Okay, um, there's a question here about Gaelic and um, the risk of Gaelic disappearing altogether um, and uh, what can be done. There's actually quite a lot in the manifesto about Gaelic, which is worth uh, checking out. So there is a lot in terms of um, how we... Uh, protect what we have and how we uh, promote uh, Gaelic and give more people opportunities. One perhaps controversial view, uh, I personally don't think it's overly controversial, but it seems every time I talk about it, it's, it's a big controversy, is around um, supporting Gaelic speakers or those who want to learn Gaelic. And there's talk in the manifesto about establishing a, a, a Gaelchach which is uh, obviously mirrored on, on Irish examples where um, you try and create places where Gaelic can be used naturally. And, and you know, those are becoming fewer and further between in, in the Highlands and Islands, where, you know, there's some places in the sky where it's still the case. So you can go into a local store and you hear it. And um, there's, there's Gaelic speakers, that, there's a lot of uh, Gaelic uh, young people in the, in the local schools um, supporting um, Gaelic speaking communities. It's not to say that others are not included. Absolutely not. We would never be, we never want to have a situation where um, others are not welcome um, and encouraged to, 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 to live in an area and to support an area. But where the focus is trying to protect that, that rich, vibrant way of life and that rich, vibrant culture in which language unlocks. And once you lose the language, you lose um, a lot of that culture and we would all be the poorer for it. It's not just Gaelic speakers that would be poorer for it. But there's a lot in the manifesto around Gaelic, a lot about supporting uh, repopulation, Solmarostig, um, and supporting this notion of, um, of, of Gaelic speaking communities where uh, policies on, on housing, policies on the economy, policies on every aspect are, are, are considered through the lens of Gaelic. Okay, um, fishing. Does the SNP support a pilot study to evaluate the benefits of the three mile limit um, on trawlers and dredging? Um, do we have further detail? Um, and how does that um, how does that fit with um, inshore uh, fish uh, management uh, plans? Um, I am uh, very uh, open to and sympathetic to the notion of making fishing more sustainable. And uh, I think that some of the proposals that have been put forward for making it more sustainable are worthy of greater work and greater progress. I think that all uh, public bodies should be pulling in the same direction to try and support more long-term sustainability in the fishing industry. I know that um, historically there's been lots of discussion about clashes and about um, uh, disagreements and um, we are all the poorer for, for, for um, public bodies not working closely with uh, representatives from the fishing industry to make sure that our fishing industry is as sustainable as possible. Uh, fishing, the fishing industry as we know it, changed um, significantly uh, when the three uh, mile limit was removed. And um, I think we have a, a duty to look at how we uh, rectify that. Um, we've obviously seen from marine protected areas 
that there are ways and means of uh, limiting uh, fishing activity in certain areas. Um, some of those uh, MPs have been the subject of conflict and tension. Others have been widely welcomed. Um, but ultimately, we need to find uh, agreement with the, in the industry and with public bodies uh, to progress that. And I think that pilot studies are generally the first uh, positive step in trying to um, trial um, solutions to that. Then there's a, a, a question about um, what percentage of um, inshore waters um, we uh, would want to protect from dredging and trawlers and what uh, the proposed uh, timescales are for such a move. Um, again, if I go back to my uh, first uh, question, I, I don't think right now there is a policy position on that. So I can only speak in terms of my own personal preference uh, rather than um, a, a position. Um, that, the, that the SNP has in their manifesto. We have already seen with marine protected areas that there are ways and means to limit certain activity within certain uh, areas of, um, a, a, of water, inshore waters. And um, I think the first step is trying to, is looking at pilots to understand a uh, what um what would make the biggest difference, particularly in short, it has to be done with as much uh, cross industry support as possible. It cannot just be done um uh, in a sort of dictatorial fashion. It has got to be done with as much um cross uh, industry support as possible. But I am very sympathetic and supportive of looking at how you make fishing sustainable in the long term. And you can only do that, in my humble opinion, uh, by looking at uh, pilot studies and understanding um, the ways in which, uh, particularly um, uh, uh, the inshore um, area, whether that's three miles or otherwise, um, uh, what difference that makes um, if you protect that inshore area and comparing um, what uh, the sustainability of the fishing in, of fishing today with the sustainability prior to the three mile limit um, uh, being being removed. So all of that's to say that I do support uh, studies and I do support pilot studies. And I know that this is an area that is um, being subject to uh, legal proceedings in the past. And so I'm talking very much uh, more generally just now in my answer uh, to this. Um, but I, I, I think that um, it nothing should be discounted uh, when it comes to uh, understanding how we ensure the long-term sustainability of the fishing industry with as much cross-fishing uh, industry support as possible. A question um, on health about um, pushing for a CT scanner in the new hospital. Uh, it's not on the list of apparatus being installed um, and would be hugely beneficial. Um, that is something that I have raised with NHS Highland um, and will um, raise uh, again. My view is that there should be as many services as possible provided in the new Broadford Hospital um, and uh, there are no services that I will not push for to be included. We have already seen some progress uh, when it comes to renal dialysis being provided in the new Broadford Hospital and I think as much as possible should be provided because I bluntly think it's ridiculous when people are having to travel um, all the way from, from Sky Lachash to Rigmore for services that could be delivered in the new hospital. And of course, you need the trained staff um, and you need the regular usage of that, uh, that apparatus to make sure that staff know how to operate it so that in an emergency, um, they, they are not um, left with uh, apparatus or equipment, but that without the skills or the, the, the regular um, understanding and familiarity with something. But that is definitely something I can um, happily push for. Uh, there's a question here about uh, young people staying and um, the lack of jobs, the lack of affordable housing, the lack of positive vision for, for, for the West Highlands and for Sky and Lachash and, and young people 
even when they um, try and set out on their own uh, to set up a, a business uh, not being able to, to, to stay. Um, I think firstly, I'd say I completely understand. Uh, I get it. Uh, I'm not probably 100 miles away from the age of whoever asked that question. And I have younger siblings that are probably even closer to age in age to those that ask that question. I get it. I also get the fact that in parts of the West Highlands, it is there are ghost villages. They are empty. There is no industry. There is no work. And there is nothing beyond um, a, a empty second homes, sometimes not even um, tourism uh, homes. And so there is a lot of work to be done. And housing has got to go hand in hand with work. Decent, well-paid work. I do not think that work alone solves the housing crisis, nor do I think the housing crisis alone will keep people in the Highlands. So they've got to go hand in hand. But the notion that all you need to do is earn more money to get a house, I think is absolutely flawed if you look at the asking prices for some of these houses. And, uh, and, uh, and the fact that in many cases, people have good, well-paid jobs and yet they're still outbid for housing. So I do think something radical needs to happen. And um, the difficult with radical things is that they sound good rhetorically. They're very difficult to implement. They're difficult to implement because um, they, they end up uh, disrupting other people's ways of life and disrupting uh, perhaps what has become a comfortable way of life. But if there's any ideology I subscribe to wholeheartedly, or any vision that I subscribe to for the Highlands, it is that the Highlands is nobody's playground. That the Highlands is not for the incomers in terms of tourists eh, alone. The Highlands is home to living, breathing communities whose way of life, whose culture is actually what attracts people in the first place. People don't just come for the stunning views. They come for the Highland hospitality. They come to understand and see our culture. They come because our reputation is internationally renowned. That inter that reputation is based on, 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 on Highland communities and Highland culture. So that's a very roundabout way of saying that if our young people cannot stay, then the Highlands, then we have given into the notion that the Highlands is just a playground for those that can afford to come. Now, our Highland, Highland hospitality, which is renowned, and has been built up painstakingly over decades, if not centuries, is based on the talent, the ingenuity, the expertise, the kindness, the warmth of people who live and work in the Highlands right now. And so we need to create opportunities work-wise, and we also need to diversify our economy, um, and we need to make sure that there are places for them to stay. So having said all that, um, what am I going to do about it? Well, firstly, uh, diversifying the economy. And I go back to this business of the Rural Entrepreneur Fund, trying to support rural entrepreneurs to build their businesses, to scale up their businesses, to headquarter their businesses in the Highlands and Islands so that they too can then sustain a, a workforce with a, diverse jobs. There are some brilliant tech businesses in Sky and Lachal. They need support. There are some brilliant a, a, businesses on the fringes of the tourism industry in terms of supporting a, tourism. They need support. There's some brilliant food and drink businesses and um, they need support. Diversifying the economy so that it isn't totally reliant um, on one sector and one industry alone. Secondly, I am a big supporter of the notion of rural burdens. Now, you cannot impose a rural burden um, on the, the, the private market uh, without um, seller's consent, but you can on state-built housing where the rural burden prohibits or limits the sale of that property for substantial profit or the sale of that property to people who don't uh, live and work in the Highlands. Um, so I think that is one way of trying to crack the housing crisis and try and ensure that housing is seen as a place for people to live and not just a commercial uh, investment proposition. So it would be a rural burden. Thirdly, just building more homes. We have made uh, big progress in building more homes. You can see them for yourselves in Broadford. You can see them in Portree. You can see them in uh, uh, Kyle and Kyle Aachen. Um, you can also see community-built housing in places like Staffan. So 
building more homes, building the right kind of homes, building the homes that will um, suit small families, new families, uh, young people that are that are trying to get on the housing ladder for the first time. Social rent, yes, but also uh, different tenures uh, where someone can get a shared equity scheme um, or can, um, can, can rent. So building more homes and uh, that needs particular understanding of uh, island and rural housing, which is where the, 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 the island housing fund, the rural housing fund has helped to unlock uh, more housing in the highlands and islands because it's paid for more of the infrastructure costs. Um, and um, so that would be the third thing, building uh, more homes. So diversifying the economy, building more homes and implementing a, a rural burden. But there's probably other ideas out there. And this is one area where I think next parliamentary term is going to be a, a priority. And I have asked um, for that the Scottish Government look at radical solutions and pilot some of those radical solutions in Sky. But you know, it's going to take radical and difficult changes, uh, which I am supportive of, but radical can be difficult. So it's good that Highland Voices keep speaking up. Okay, I think that largely covers a lot of the themes. There are other questions which are um, of a similar, in a similar vein, a lot more questions around, a lot of questions about potholes, which I've uh, talked about uh, local house, uh, local um, uh, infrastructure, local roads. This question there about job creation, um, a question there about empty second homes. Uh, I suppose the only thing to add to my housing answer on empty second homes was around disincentives, you know, particularly our, uh, the additional dwelling supplement and what we can do with council tax to um, disincentivise um, empty uh, second homes. And that could be part of some of the more radical solutions. Um, I've talked about uh, fishing uh, and I've talked about um, healthcare. Of course, if you think, if you're not happy with any of my answers, or you think that there are questions that should have been asked, that have been asked, then send me an email. I'm really sorry that the stream uh, broke halfway. That was entirely my fault. Um, I am doing the technical support as well as speaking and answering the questions. And I stupidly, when uh, the, 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 the broadband was buffering, I decided to refresh it. So apologies for that. In refreshing it, um, it broke the link. So I, I am very sorry, and it's why I am uh, in this job and not uh, the tech support. Um, so apologies for that. Uh, but thank you to those who have uh, found the new link and who have um, picked up uh, the feed. And the, the this video, along with the other one, will be published, I hope. Um, again, I'm the tech support, so we'll see how successful that is. But thank you very much. We're a little bit over the 45 minutes, which I was uh, aiming for uh, because of uh, my tech naivety. Um, but like I said, um, follow up with any uh, questions or comments that you might have. And uh, in the meantime, thanks very much uh, for joining me.